Hi folks, let's take a look at the general geometric series. So our goal is to analyze the general geometric series A plus AX plus AX squared plus etc. Now this is a sequel. In the last video we learned that the geometric sequence with common ratio X that has a first term of 1 converges to the value 1 over 1 minus X if the absolute value of X is less than 1 and otherwise diverges. Now, look, um, this video is a little bit of anti-climax after the last video because at this moment you can very clearly see what the result's going to be. We're basically going to be scaling the old series by a factor of A, and that's pretty much the end of the story. But we are going to look at this very carefully in the context of the definitions we've recently learned. So sequence of partial sums, the definition of convergence in terms of the limiting value of the sequence of partial sums, and so on. We're going to be extra careful and just work this result out rigorously. So the question here is, what is the most general possible geometric series? Well, to be honest, it's not much more general than what we were looking at in the previous video. You start with any old term A, and then to be geometric, you have to multiply by the same common ratio, which we'll call X, to get the remaining, remaining terms. So here is the most general possible geometric series, and we're going to assume that A is not equal to zero because that's... That would be a rather silly series that doesn't take much analysis to understand. It would be 0 plus 0 plus 0, etc. So here's our general geometric series. And let's consider the sequence of partial sums. And so they look exactly like this. The uh, partial sums are what you get by adding up all the terms up until that point. And so the nth partial sum will be the sum of all the terms up until ax to the n minus 1. Now we can factor out an A, no problem from this. And from the last video, we had a nifty formula for this expression. It was just one minus X to the N over one minus X. And of course this formula only works when X is not equal to one, but that case isn't such a loss either because that's also trivial. That'll just give you the series A plus A plus A plus dot dot dot. So that's a trivial kind of series to analyze as well. So, so far, no big losses with our assumptions. And from the last video, the punchline there was that the limiting value of this sequence is 1 over 1 minus x if the absolute value of x is less than 1, and that sequence diverges if the absolute value of x is greater than 1. And here we've excluded the cases x equals 1 and x equals negative 1. And so for the general geometric series, the calculation is quite simple. The limiting value of the partial sum, sigma n, is going to be the limiting value of this expression. We can pull out the scalar a using a limit law for uh, scalar multiplication. We will then borrow the result from our last video. So the limiting value of the partial sums is going to be a over 1 minus x if the absolute value of x is less than 1, and that sequence will diverge if the absolute value of x is greater than 1. So assuming a is not equal to zero, here's our result. And notice that we've uh, now included these trivial cases x equals one and x equals negative one. Um, these cases yield respectively the divergent series a plus a plus a and a minus a plus a minus a. The first of these series diverges to positive or negative infinity depending on whether a is positive or negative. And the second series is gonna have um, a sequence of partial sums that alternates between a and zero a0, a0, and so that will clearly diverge. So both of these cases should be included in the divergent case, and that's why this formula has been amended to say that the series diverges if the absolute value of x is greater than or equal to one. So there it is, in its full glory, the formula for the general geometric series. And we can state it in a little more positive way. If the absolute value of x is less than 1, then this series converges to a over 1 minus x. And we notice that the first term shows up prominently in the formula, as does the common ratio. And so we have a nice sort of bumper sticker version of this formula. The sum of a convergent geometric series is equal to the first term divided by 1 minus the common ratio. So let's take a look at a couple of examples. So here's a series 
you look at it for a moment and you realize that it's geometric and the common ratio is actually equal to negative one half. Negative one half is strictly between negative one and one, and so the series converges. What does it converge to? Well, we have this snappy formula, first term divided by one minus the common ratio. And we can multiply top and bottom by two and simplify, and so this series uh, converges to the value 16 thirds. Now, I just have to show you a scenic route to the solution I am quite partial to. I, I love to factor out the first term and recognize what's left as quote unquote the geometric series that has first term one. And so when you look at it that way, then it's clear that uh, you have A times the formula for that kind of series, one over one minus negative one half. And of course, that's going to give you the same result when you simplify. So here's a second example. This is some uh, rather intimidating looking sigma notation. What are we to make of this? So let's use some laws of exponents to simplify this a little bit. So we can expand five to the n minus one as five to the n, five to the negative one. And we, we can expand that denominator to, all the way to eight to the n using laws of exponents. And meanwhile, pull out a factor of three tenths. You should check that this is correct. And when you write it this way, you can now really see that uh, this is geometric and we're looking at powers of five eighths. So this is geometric and the common ratio is five eighths. And so the series converges because that's between negative one and one. What does it converge to? Well, it would be nice to know what the first term is. And the first term in this summation corresponds to the index n equals three. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to the original formula, which is probably gonna be easier to simplify um, in this process. And we're gonna substitute three n carefully and you get three times five squared over two to the 10. So that's your first term. And so we can simply write out the sum of the series now. It's going to be that first term times one over one minus five eighths. And once again, I'd like to just take the scenic route. Um, you can take the right-hand expression and factor out the three-tenths is already factored and factor out a five-eighths to the third. And lo and behold, there's your geometric series that starts with first term one. And of course, you're going to get the same thing. Um, you may wind up uh, writing a few extra steps down when you go this route, but I just can't help myself. I love recognizing the geometric series that is lurking about any geometric series. All right, in summary, a geometric series converges if and only if its common ratio lies strictly between negative one and one, in which case the sum of the series is the first term over one minus the common ratio. So remember this formula and you'll be able to evaluate a lot of different uh, infinite series.